what's up, guys? Welcome to episode 14, season 3, oh, sorry, mm. of the Monday Night Wars. Mm. I am Chad Talks, and joining me, as always, is the king of PW, except for when it comes to me, and I'm the king. What? Um, are, you, gaming. are you out of your damn mind? I am king of this courthouse. Um, one, two... Three. Oh, sorry. I was just you counting. Dwelling on the, you can't dwell on the past, Justin. You have to look towards the. Future. I was just counting my king. Of, I was just counting my uh, company of the years awards. Yeah. yeah. Shows of the year. Give one, a shit about your company of the year. Two, awards. three, two, three show of the year awards. Okay. Uh, best matches. One, two, two best matches. Okay. Wrestle yeah, of the I've year. A, I have a company of the year award too. You do not. On the first stuff uh, in the first one we did. From what ninety seven. You didn't win that. I won match of the year. You won show of the year. That's what it was, yeah. And we had a month of gameplay. Yeah, well, I still won it. I guess if you want to count that, go <laughs> ahead. But a month of, I worked hard for that month. I guess, yeah. I mean, it, it may have helped that it was Starcade and it boosted your ratings a little bit, but hey, if you want to take it, take it. Don't hate the player, Justin. Hate the game. Yeah, Chad, you've done a lot of hating the game. Well, Speaking of the game, he's in the main event tonight. Oh, look at that. But first, Nick Gage. He defeats Balls Mahoney in a hardcore match here in the pre-show. Oh, yeah. What do you know about Balls, Chad? Not much. Me either. Nick Gage, though. Former. He was, in the, he was in the King of the Ring this year. He was in the field. Also on the pre-show, we see Lenny Lane accepting the challenge. Buff Bagwell laid out Lenny Lane last week on Monday Night Raw. And Lenny Lane wants Buff Bagwell in six days at King of the Ring. European Championship on the line. Lenny Lane, Buff Bagwell. Are you hyped for that one, Chad? I'm pumped for that. Can't wait. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <coughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Our last match on the pre-show here, Chad. Marcus, oh, no. Lauren, Nidus, and Barry Windham go one-on-one. -on -one. And Barry Windham may have gotten the win. He may have won the battle here, but he did not win the war. Because he's damaged his spine. Oh, not his spine. <laughs> Bob Why Orton. do you look so thrilled about that? Yeah, Bob, Bob Orton is pretty happy about that. Why did that look like Minoru Suzuki as an old man wearing a cowboy hat? Because you are blind. Okay. That looked like maybe Bob Orton the, Jr. to me. Maybe maybe from the angle I was sitting at. That looked just like Minoru Suzuki. What are you? Like, what angle like are you sitting at, Chad? But like southern. I'm upside down. <laughs> are you like a bat? Do you have your feet on the roof or the ceiling? Yeah. 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 You're so and funny. Then, and, it's, and it's dark out. I've only played with echolocation. Ooh. Chad bringing out echolocation. Everybody tell me your favorite Pokemon move. That's supersonic, you idiot. Mine's Hydro Pump. Oh, mine would be uh, probably... Splash? Probably, probably Thunderbolt. Oh, it's such a basic one, Chad. You literally had a Hydro Pump. Yeah, because I panicked. It's more like Dragon Punch or Dragon Breath, sorry. Dragon, oh, Dragon Breath, okay. Or Actually, you know what? I really like Metronome because Metronome can be any move. It's random. My yeah, favorite as a like... kid was Hyper Beam because that shit would always kill me in the Elite Eight. Or elite, final elite four, sorry, whatever elite the four, yeah. final four, whatever the fuck they called it. Elite four, you're right. Because when did the, what did the last guy have a Dragonite? Yeah. With hyper beam, oh. Who was your starter though? You had Squirtle. No, I always went Charmander. Okay. Because you could just because oh, I was a Bulbasaur guy. I just felt like fire in the beginning because you're usually you would have to fight through a forest, right? And if you could get Ember at a low level, you can just grind in the forest for a long time because you're super effective. You can True. just build up your guy until you fight Brock. But then you have to face rock at a rock gym and a water gym. And fire is not that's why you, with that. That's why you grind early. Oh, so you're, you're just overpower. You were, you, were, you were hoping to go in at like the rock gym at like level 20. And oh, 25 like, for me. sure. Yes. Open ass. Yeah. I'll, like, oh, I got a Charmeleon by the first gym. Like, that's what you're hoping for. I think I just got a text, Chad, that it is a 6-6 game in Edmonton. Kyle Yamamoto has tied the game. It was 6-2. and Do now we it's... pause the recording and jump back in after? Uh, nope. Nope. 
Okay, no, we, we do not. Because I want to watch hockey. Damn, what a game this has become over there in Edmonton. Game one, when this comes out, Calgary-Edmonton for any hockey fans. Calgary had a big lead. Edmonton has come back and tied the game up 6-6. But this promo, it's the final four of Raw. Rock and Triple H in our main event. Our co-main event, Stasiak and Randy Orton. And Brock says, it doesn't matter who these four men. It doesn't matter who wins King of the Ring. I don't care if it's a small, one of these Raw guys. It doesn't matter if it's one of these SmackDown guys. Hell, Vince could put on the strap. Uh, he, could, he could put on some fucking wrestling pants and wrestle me again. It does not matter. I'm never losing this championship on my shoulder as long as I live and am contracted to the WWF. I will be the Raw WWF World Heavyweight Champion. We start off our opening match, though, Chad. P.J. Black and Joey Matthews gets an 87. P.J. Black. P.J. Black, man. You trigger your company right there. I love P.J. Black. P.J. Black defeats Joey Matthews in 1459 by submission. Speaking of future of the company, he says... Oh, the, here he comes. He says the exact same thing, though, Chad. He says, you know, ever since me and Steph got back together, we've had one thing on our mind. The McMahon Black... Dynasty. Imagine. The daughter of the CEO, the owner of the WWF. <coughs> with a coughing Justin in the background. With her husband, with her with her husband, PJ Black, running the WWF. Imagine me, PJ Black, the World WWE Champion, with my wife, Stephanie McMahon, Women's Champion. Imagine a world where PJ Black and Stephanie McMahon run the WWF. And I, this is just the beginning. I'm going to turn this plan into reality. PJ Black. I thought you were going to have him jump to a knee and propose right there. They're already married. All right, they are, yes. They're already married. I decided they're already married. Oh, wow. The Flames said, I don't care. They score immediately right after. Oh. <laughs> Calgary is up. Seven. Does, Edmund, does Edmonton answer back? What a game. <laughs> uh, Edge and Christian. Uh, I might just pull it up and put it in the background for you, Chad. Is it in the, th- is it in the third right now? Yeah. Um. I'm Connor McDavid. Score that goal. What I like about that is... I want overtime hockey. Let me... Uh... Let me get it as small. Oh, oh, oh! Let me get it as small as possible for you, Chad. <laughs> oh, oh yes, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Sorry, Chad. That's all you're getting. This, that's okay. This is more important. We're we're performing for our fans. Oh, you can you can't see that? I can see. It. I can see. It. It's it's awful. Oh, Edge and Christian. Are, are being made fun of, uh, Chad, because they also have now been fully eliminated from the King of the Ring. And Punk and Steel says, ha-ha, you losers. Um, and then they start brawling, Chad. And oh, security no. has to break them up. And Vince McMahon says, hey, you guys better stop. All right, I just got an email from Eric Bischoff. And according to him, according to Eric Bischoff, at King of the Ring, we're going to have a... <sighs> A tag team spectacle. It's going to be a four on four match. You two, you four men are going to team up to take on four men from SmackDown. I guess Eddie Gu- or Chavo Guerrero and Latin Lover and Rene Dupree and Sylvain Grenier. Tag team spectacle. You guys better not let me down. All right. Now stop fighting and start. Being a tag team, being a coherent group of raw superstars for one fucking week. After that, go bananas. Fight each other. I don't care. Go ahead. Uh, Tom Pritchard and Sean Devari come out. Chad Sean Devari's got a match up next. And he defeats Dozer in 937 with a magic carpet ride. One half of the Brothers of Construction. Yes, sir. Dean Malenko is uh, backstage, and he finds Alex Wright, Chad, and he hits him in the back of the head with his Intercontinental Championship, Chad. Lays out Alex Wright. He says, that's for, beating, that's for blindsiding me a couple weeks ago and costing me the King of the Ring. And at King of the Ring, at the pay-per-view, 
I'm going to beat your ass again. Alex Wright, Dean Malenko at the pay-per-view in six days, Chad. We have a, oh, a women's tag team match, Chad. Oh, hell yeah. Toshi Yumatsu and Miko Satomura take on Mickey James and Lisa Marie Varone. And uh, Yumatsu and Satomura win in 10-26. Big win over Mickey James and Lisa Marie Varone. Randy Orton is getting ready for his biggest match of his career. He takes on Sean Stasiak with an opportunity to wrestle at King of the Ring. An opportunity to headline and fight for a, a headline SummerSlam and fight for a world heavyweight championship. There's a shirtless man on the hockey game right now. <laughs> yeah. uh, That's me. That's me. You're there? there oh the wi-fi hockey game oh that's a penalty uh, <laughs> randy i'm distracted this stinks randy orton uh yeah randy orton getting ready for his match against sean stasiak tonight chad but first speaking of chad chad gallier defeats and taps out alex Scalibur in 1443 hell yeah i do that's not you uh, and here we go chad here we go. Chad, you did predict uh, Randy Orton and Sean. You, you didn't predict either one of these in the final four, so this is an automatic loss for you. But are you going to... Who are you going to pick to now? Are you going to predict Randy Orton or Sean Stasiak here, Chad? Um, I mean, you know what? You know what? Fuck that guy. I'm going to go Randy Orton. Ooh, Randy Orton. I... Hate Sean Stasiak. Wow. Um, yeah, this was a, a hell of a match between two guys that uh, Sean Stasiak hates Randy Orton. You know, his Orton's brother took out Stasiak, you know, at SummerSlam last year. And Sean Stasiak brings the intensity, you know, he brings the absolute fight to Randy Orton. And Randy Orton, former Intercontinental Champion, you know. Very in a very very solid in ring talent. These guys have an absolute war, but at the end of the day, Sean Stasiak defeats Randy Orton in 1801 with a Falcon Arrow. This match had no psychology in the ring, and that's because, yeah, I don't know why. These guys, I guess, don't have psychology. Well, Stasiak doesn't. Stasiak has never had the best psychology. And yeah, Randy no. Orton's still a young, a young kid. Yes, very true, Chad. Very true. Thank you for making me feel a little bit better about this match. Yeah. But Stasiak you defeats. This, you, you run, you run this in like five, five or six more years, and well, who knows? If I have Stasiak in six years, that's gonna be crazy. I'm assuming you will take him by then. I'll, or at least Randy. You won't take Randy. He's mine. Uh, yeah, so Stasiak moves on and celebrates in the middle of the ring over Randy Orton. It will be Stasiak at King of the Ring. Who will he take on, though? Will it be Triple H or will it be The Rock? That's not Kurt Angle, though. Not Kurt, Angle. Kurt Angle's in a dark gym and he vows that this is not the end of the wrestling machine, Kurt Angle. He vows he will get his revenge and finally... Meet his destiny of becoming world heavyweight champion. But here we go, Chad. The the two competitors make their way down to the ring. It's Triple H. It's The Rock. You predicted The Rock. You predicted both these guys in this spot, but you predicted The Rock to move on. Here we go. And a great match. Triple H defeats The Rock in 2230. With a pedigree, Chad. An unbelievable match. A 99. We just can't get that 100 anymore. It's avoiding us. It's avoiding us, Chad. That's because they don't like people who gloat. Well, that means our, our, our one of our... The raw side will be Triple H versus Sean Stasiak. A king of the ring, Chad. What a That's match. Before, right? It might have. I don't know off the top of my head. If it has, not in a while. Yeah, well, yeah, certainly not in a while. I remember Sean Stasiak took Triple H's spot in Armageddon in 1999 when Triple H went down with injury. I remember that. 
<laughs> but yeah, that is it for Monday Night Raw 95. I think that's so we still squeaked out a 95, but that leaves the door open. Nitro, had a, you had a very good Nitro last week. Can you uh, repeat it this week? We'll have to right, find out. Yeah. Maybe not. A, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see you for Nitro. Chad, any last words? Uh, ooh, we are here with Nitro. Uh, ooh. Ooh, you got to be quicker than that, Chad. Got to be here with Nitro. Justin, I'm going to leave this call real quick because I can't see the screen. Give me one second. Stall. Band. All right. All right we start off Monday Night Nitro with six men who... Oh, you're back. Back, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. All right, yes, we start off. These six men are in the Stars and Stripes. Oh, the Stars and Stripes match, Justin. And we see all six of them are in the ring, and they're all cutting promos on each other. Standing in the ring, planted in, uh, uh, above a ladder, is an American flag, right? And all of, each one of them talk about what, what, what main event in Great American Bash means, but more importantly, what holding the United States Championship means, you know? Uh, Bob Holly, Hardcore Holly. He says, you know, last year was one of the worst years of my career. I told myself this year I was going to make it. It was going to be different. I told myself this year was going to be the year that I turned my career around and the year I prove everyone wrong about Hardcore Holly, and I've done that. I'm a hardcore champion, and at Great American Bash, I'm going to become the United States champion because there's nothing more hardcore than America. And then Shane Douglas, he stands there and he says, well, you can be as hardcore as you want, Holly, but I'm the franchise. <laughs> and I'm a former tag team champion. And I've also had a, a, one of the best years I've had in a long time. And I can't think of anything else that would make the Paul Heyman guys happy. And if I added the United States Championship match, our title, to the ball, to to our collection of belts, and that's exactly what I plan on doing at Great American Bash. And he says, you know, unlike you guys, I haven't had the best year. Right? I, I, I this has been one of the worst. This like I've that last year was the best year of my career, and it started when I won that belt. That U.S. belt means more to me than anything. So I'm going win at Great American Bash, and I'm going to put my career back on track, and I'm going to get back to the United States Championship, because I need it. Akimichi you Noku, know, he says, you know, I left, another, I left another company to come here, because I looked around and I saw that some of the best wrestlers in this company were who I wanted to wrestle, and I look, and I see some of them in this very room with me right now, right? And I need to prove that Takamichi Noku can go toe-to-toe with anyone. That Takamichi Noku is one of the best wrestlers on the planet. And that's why I'm going to climb that ladder, plant that flag, and become the United States Heavyweight Championship. McFoley, he says, you know, unlike all of you guys, I've been told that I don't have very many years left in, in my career. This might be my last chance. That's why I'm going to be... And Chris Benoit cuts everybody off. He just says, listen, you all have your reasons. You all have your stories, and those are great. And I hope you bring your A game, because I look forward to beating each and every one of you. And I win stars and scars and stripes. I retain my heavyweight championship. You all talk about having some of the rough... The, 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 the worst years of your career. I didn't have a career a year ago. I sat on the shelf... I would have loved to have lost matches. I didn't even get to wrestle matches. I sat there watching people do what I love to do and not being able to. And damn it, now I'm back. And I'm going to win that belt. I'm going to retain that belt. And I'm going to prove why Chris Benoit is the best wrestler in the world. Hey, Justin, these six men, they're going to go to war. Great American Bat. They're going to go to war. Who's going to come out to the United States champion? Who's your pick, Justin? Who's your pick? Uh, Shane Douglas. You think she is? That a, that's not a for real pick. None of these guys have impressed me in the, in the lead up. All right. He's a Heyman guy. He has to win. Heyman guy. Speaking of guys, we got Spike. 
six. And in a decent speaking match, of six dudes. defeats. Speaking of the two dudes, six defeats Spike with a tombstone. Justin. Yes, sir. What a match. What a match. I don't have any much. I don't have much more to say about this match. No, but we, that happened. And after the words, afterwards, the Dudleys and the and the and the now the outsiders they all come out and they're exchanging words. They're fighting. Listen, they ended up in a double DQ and at, at, at Great American Bass, Justin. They want to have they want to have another match, but they don't want to have a match that ends in a double DQ because their match they're going to have it be a no disqualification match. That's kind of a banger right there. Dudleys versus the Outsiders, Justin. Ooh, I love to see it. I love to hear it. I'm gonna love to listen to it. Oops, hopefully. We have here a tag team match. Two tough enough men, uh, coaches and their rookies and about that had decent wrestling but not much heat. Bret Hart and Eddie Cologne defeat Fit Finley and Chuck Palumbo when Bret Hart and Fit Finley with a victory roll. Eddie Cologne really got lucky with getting Bret Hart as his coach. Hey, well, if I listen, at first he almost didn't even want Bret to be his coach. Jeremy Borash comes in the ring and he says, Bret, Last week, you pulled Chris Jericho aside, and you talked to him about his upcoming match against Shawn Michaels. What did you tell him? Can you tell us what you said? Brett said. I told him, watch out. Watch his back. I don't trust that, that, that scumbag Shawn Michaels as far as I can throw him. And listen, I don't like Chris Jericho. But the last time... Shawn Michaels wrestled a, a Canadian for the world title in the main event. Let's just say it didn't end too well for that guy. And even though I don't like Jericho, he's still a member of this WCW roster. He, st he still doesn't deserve screwed. So I told him to watch his back. And I told him, don't let this company, don't let Shawn... Don't let anybody beat you unless they actually beat you. So Bret Hart, he's mad as hell. You know, he's not I'm, happy that Shawn Michaels is here. Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be happy either. Not gonna lie. We've got a tag team match. Uh, members of Queen Charmel's court, Trish and Kuta Suzuki, taking on Lita and Kara Slice, and and about. That decent wrestling, but a little heat. Christian Suzuki defeat Lita and Kara Slice when Trish Stratus pinned Kara Slice with the Stratus faction. Right. Kara Slice, the weak link in uh, in the match. Cutie Suzuki had a strong connection with the young female demographic who really liked her winning. Yeah, look at that. You haven't seen that message before because you never put Cutie Suzuki over. Look at her. Fans love her. Fans love Cutie Suzuki. Chris Jericho. No, you just you see him. You see him, and you know he says he says. No. This championship, the last few months, have been the best of my career. I'm not talking to you about Chris Jericho, the wrestler. I'm talking to you as Chris Jericho, the person. Chris Jericho, the man. And I know, I know without a doubt. You know, I know I'm not the most easy. That I'm, I'm, I'm not the most likable guy, right? I'm cocky. I'm arrogant. I know I'm good, but there's nothing in the world that has meant more to me than this championship. And there's nothing that meant more to me than each and every single one of you. And I just wanted to say tonight that I'm going to walk in the Great American Bash with my belt with the with, with to get my belt back, and I'm going to continue to be best champion. <laughs> and then, and then I'm going to go perform in Fozzy, and you all can go months and months without seeing me on TV because guess what? I've busted my ass every single week for this. Piss that company, and for all of you dumb idiot fans, and you still boo me every single week. You don't understand that I am a national treasure of professional wrestling. I am the best. And you're all going to realize it 
When you don't have a world champion, when you don't have Chris Jericho on your show, and then you fools, you idiots who refuse to cheer me, who refuse to, to, to cheer for your champion, the same idiots who buy my dumb shirt, who buy my shirts and wear it while booing me, you all bought tickets to go see my band. So thanks for making me rich. See you never. I'm going to beat Shawn Michaels. I'm going to regain my belt, become a three-time world champion. Then I'm splitting. And you won't see me again until I decide to come back. So enjoy, everyone. This is my final Nitro for a long time. And I just want to give you all one final goodbye. Goodbye to the fans. Goodbye to WCW. And I hope you all say goodbye to your world championship. Goodbye. Maybe you can, but maybe you can see me wear the belt when you go see me and Fozzy perform at a venue near you. Ooh. Okay. Justin, we've got Goldberg versus <laughs> Johnny B. Bad. At a decent match, Goldberg defeated Johnny B. Bad with a jackhammer. Not yeah. much to say. Yeah, that not, happened. not really much to say here. John Michaels cuts a promo and he says, Jericho, you're wrong. These fans are going to have a champion that they're going to see every single week because I'm going to win. I'm going to become, once again, champion uh, the right way. And I'm going to prove why the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels, isn't just Triple H's sidekick, isn't just Kurt Angle's tag team partner. I don't need to team with a dragon. I can carry a company all on my own. I'm going to prove that. And I hit you with sweet chin music. I pin you in the middle of the ring. And the show stopper once again steals the show and steals the world championship He's under not gonna... your weaselly fingers. Ooh, weasel boy. All right. Main event. Is after this match. This is, this is not the main event. Uh, listen, Justin, these two guys are going to be taking on uh, Suzuki and RVD in a triple threat tag team match. But tonight, two of these two men are going to go one on one. Big Daddy V and Johnny Stamboli in a decent match. Big Daddy V, if he had to listen, Johnny Stamboli had too much of gabagoo. And Big Daddy <laughs> had v too much of gabagoo. He beat him with a big splash. He's lucky he didn't throw up afterwards. Um. In our main event, Justin, these two men forced the team up to take on the tag team champions tonight. And th it was no surprise. They could not get along, Justin. And I think their inability to get along is what cost them tonight because Minoru Suzuki and Rob Van Dam won when Suzuki pinned Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels' first loss here in WCW. Tag team match. It's still a loss. Still yeah, got I pinned. Mean, still a loss. And that... Ooh, 94, Chad. Just a little... What would you... What, what, 95. Ah, oh, just barely. You, you're almost there. You just can't do it, Chad. You just can't do it. It's almost there. And almost I don't think there. Thunder's going to do it because that main event scene over there is the shit. Listen, you don't know. I No, I I know, Chad. When, you're, when you got Bob Sapp at a main event... I know. We'll see you for the go home for SmackDown. We are here on the final SmackDown before King of the Ring. Justin, I am very, I guess, I'm, King of the Ring, Rumble season and King of the Ring are always two things I look forward to when you book because you do such a good job of telling a story over like the span of, of, of multiple months. And I'm just, I'm excited to see this play out. But before we can see it fully play out, we still got one more stop. We I'm have excited to see one more stop, Chad. We already have found out who will represent Raw in the final four, the King of Ring. It will be Triple H taking on Sean Stasiak. The winner of that match will main event King of the Ring for an opportunity to headline SummerSlam to fight for a World Heavyweight Championship and be crowned King of the Ring. But tonight we have to find out who will join them. Who will represent SmackDown? Two main event matches tonight in the Elite Eight here. Kid Cash taking on Mystico. The two underdogs. Two people that most people probably didn't see coming, including Chad, who had Mystico losing in the first round. And now he's here in the Elite Eight. 
Kid Cash coming out of nowhere. He said he was going to do it. He said he was. this is the end of being called Kid Cash and the start of being called Man Cash. Can he do it? And then on the other side, it's the big, big name talents. It's Stone Cold Steve Austin, the man that the beat the streak at WrestleMania, taking on the big, bad booty daddy, one of the greatest WCW World Heavyweight Champions of all time, Scott Steiner. What a match. What a show we have here. Scott Steiner, baby. Two of those men will headline or will move on to the pay-per-view. And one of these one of those four men will actually headline the pay-per-view in two days. It's gonna be great. It'd Let's be, it'd be low key sick if it was like if it was uh Stasiak and Steiner. That'd be sick. It'd be huge. Be huge. Let's start the show though, Chad. We start off with Nick Gage taking on Jack Evans in the pre show. I booked this as a hardcore match and Nick Gage tapped out Jack Evans. Oh good. You want to know the the move he did? He choked him out with barbed wire. Uh, that'll make anyone tap out. I would tap out to that. Oh, certainly. Uh, another pre-show match. We have Perry Saturn getting an 87 in the pre-show, defeating Road Dogg in 15-10 with a flying elbow drop. Perry Saturn can go, man. Yeah. And our last pre-show match of the night, Gangrel defeating Lance Cade. You thought yeah, I forgot I had Gangrel? No, I, I remembered. He's still here. He got an impaler. He wins. But we start off SmackDown here in the Arizona Veterans Coliseum in Phoenix, Arizona, the hottest area we have ever gone to. And I got a cough. <coughs> I have the, the dreaded coughs. But we start off with psychosis, Chad. You haven't seen a lot of psychosis. He's your WWF SmackDown World Heavyweight Champion. And this is a, a, a slight con of the King of the Ring. You don't really see the champions that often. Because the head stories are who's going to win King of the Ring. And usually the world champions are not in the King of the Ring. And Sakaios, so he acknowledges that. He says he's really appreciated this, genuinely, this last month of just relaxing and getting the body set and straight. But he says he is confident the King of the Ring will come from SmackDown. He's confident one of those four men, Stone Cold, Steiner, Kid Cash Mystica, will win the King of the Ring. And it doesn't matter which one of those four will do it. Because at SummerSlam, he is going to beat Whoever it is, he says, I would love for it to be Kid Cash, man. He's really he's really done it. He's really proved himself this month. I would love for it to be Mystico. Going back to my Lucha Libre uh, roots, we could have an unbelievable match. We, it could be Scott Steiner, the wars we had in WCW, reigniting that rivalry right there at SummerSlam, the biggest show of the summer. What a match that would be. But it could also be the Texas Rattlesnake Stone Cold Steve Austin. Personally, I would love for it to be Stone Cold. I would love to smack that little smart, uh, smirk off that Texas Rattlesnake's dumb-looking face. What? Who's, that's the dumbest thing in this business, Stone Cold. What? Shut up. Okay, when I hit you with the flying leg drop at SummerSlam, and I get that pin one, two, three. Everyone will know why you don't come into the kitchen if you can't handle the heat. Chef Psychosis. Uh, oh, Chef Psychosis. He dropped that name, Chad. Did. Why did he say Chef? What's that mean? What's Is he coming mean? back? We start off the, the opening show tonight, though, with Clyde Flanders taking on Roadkill. And Clyde Flanders defeating Roadkill in 15, 10, 14, sorry, with a pile driver. Kimberly Page did some good work at ringside. And again, Kimberly Page and Clyde Flanders have some great chemistry. Um, but after the match, Booker T comes down and attacks Clyde Flanders. He says, oh, you want to you come attack Booker T? Oh, you want to challenge me for the United States Championship? Oh, you got it, Clyde Flanders. You've... You've had easy road. You've 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 uh, you've hurdled over every obstacle we've thrown at you. But at King of the Ring, if you want a shot at my United States Championship, you got to go through a gauntlet. And then you aren't just going to take on the Godfather, or you're not going to take on some schmuck named Roadkill. No, you're going to go one on one in a gauntlet against three members, two members of the Gentlemen's Club. And if you can beat them, hell, I'll, I'll, we will go one on one. For the United States Championship. So Clyde Flanders. 
He's got to go through two members of the Gentleman's Club, Chad. Two matches to get his hands on Booker T at the pay-per-view. Wild. Stone Cold Steve Austin is asked, Stone Cold, are you ready to enter hell? <laughs> that was a... That was a <laughs> And Stone Cold just flips him off and walks away. John Cena defeats Farouk here, Chad. Oh, good for John Cena. John Cena on the main card, defeating Farouk in 15-18 with a spin-up powerbomb. Kid Cash is backstage, and he is asked, man, you have done... You, you're almost there. You can taste the king of the ring, Kid Cash. But you take on the, the, the ultimate luchador, Mystico. Can you get it done? Can you put Mystico away and move on to the king of the ring? And he says, yeah. Look, I didn't, I didn't come from being a, a meme wrestler back in 1998. They didn't call me Kid Cash Me Outside. How about that for no reason? All right? I'm a damn good wrestler. I'm one of the best in the business. And Mystico, I respect everything you've done here in WWF. But you're 18. You're still green. You still don't have that experience to get it done when it counts. And how they might call me Kid Cash, and I may be calling you a kid. And I know that doesn't make sense much. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the dead level on you, Mystico, and put your ass to sleep. And then Steiner and Austin, whoever, whoever walks out that match, you're going to get the same treatment in two days. Kid Cash will be the king of the ring. Kid Cash really selling himself here, Chad. Do you yeah. believe in Kid Cash? You know, you know, you know, King Cash has a good ring. King to Cash. Ooh. Ooh. The Guerrero Dojo makes their way down to the ring. They're in a three on three tag match here. Up next, they take on La Resistance. And the Guerrero Dojo defeat the La Resistance in 1528 when Eddie taps out Rob Conway with a gory special. But. Man, there's some, there's these four of these men will team up to take on Edge and Christian and CM Punk and A Steel at King of the Ring. What a match that'll be, Chad. What a match that'll be. What a match. Mystico is backstage. He's asked about the same thing Kid Cash was asked. How do you think you got it? Are you going to do it? What's going through your mind right now, Mystico? And he says, you know, people laughed at me. You know, they said I was I was never gonna make it in the heavyweight division. You're too small. You, you're not big enough. You're not muscular enough. You know that's what they're looking for. That's what Vince is looking for. That's what Eric's looking for. But now look at me. I just defeated one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, Eddie Guerrero. He was the first WWF SmackDown World Heavyweight Champion. He was the he he won the King of the Ring. He headlined the WrestleMania, and I beat him. One, two, three, fair and square. No lying, no cheating, no stealing in that match. I have everything laid out right in front of me. I have one more match to get to the pay-per-view. This is the farthest I've ever come in my wrestling career, and I'm not going to let Kid Cash step in my way. I'm not going to let Scott Steiner step in my way. Hell, I'm not going to let Stone Cold Steve Austin step in my way. This is my destiny to win King of the Ring, and not a man in this SmackDown locker room is going to get in that way. Mystico, Kid Cash later tonight, Chad. But first, Chris Daniels and Tajiri take on Chris Sabin and LaParka. And Daniels and Tajiri get a big win over Sabin and Parka. It is Chris Daniels, LaParka at King of the Ring. But Chris Daniels pins Sabin here with the last rights. Got an 80. Got an 80. Chad, I'm going to have you do this one. Scott Steiner, do you think you're going to win King of the Ring? What a dumb thing to even freaking ask me. You want to know how confident I am about being king? Let me tell you something. I'm I'm Scott Steiner, all right? And everybody else, everybody else over here, you're all just piss-ant peasants. You don't deserve to even be in the same category as King Scott Steiner and the Gentleman's Club, all right? Now listen, Stone Cold Steve Austin... All right, you walk around there with your jorts and your vet and your drink beer. All right, listen, you're, you're, you're nothing more, Steve Austin, than 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 a dumbass hick. It's Scott Steiner. A honky talk man. 
You're gonna go. <laughs> you can get your ass kicked, and then you and everybody else in this company are gonna bow down to a king. And this king has never been more finer than the soon-to-be king of the ring, Scott Steiner. And that's not me reading off some dumb <laughs> That is Steiner. Shoot. Hey. Can Scott Steiner do it? We will find out later tonight. We've heard from all four men. I think let's get right into it, though, Chad. Kid Cash and Mystico. Chad, you didn't predict either one of these. So at this point, I'm going to have to ask you, who do you got, Kid Cash or Mystico? Listen, I want to see King Cash because in WWF, Cash is king. And I need to see King Cash. Ooh. Well, oh my fucking god. Mystico wins in 1548 with the Palanca Tornado. Good for Mystico. What happens next? Oh, well, uh, Kid Cash got hurt in this, by the way. Uh, that's why I was pissed off. I don't know if they had uh, any chemistry or anything. They had just know that match only got an 82 and Kid Cash got hurt. Okay. I should have just played it off. Whatever, Mystico... Uh, well, kick, this promo doesn't happen because Kid Cash has to be helped to the back. Um, he had, a, I think, a torn pectoral muscle, I think it was. Oh, no. Serious injury. Yeah. I think that's what I read. I could be wrong, but I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping I'm wrong. But Jesus. Oh, a tough break for Kid Cash right there, if that's the case. No pun, no, no pun intended. <laughs> that sucks. Uh, yeah. And then we get Steiner and Austin making their way down to the ring, Chad. This match is gonna bang. Who do you got? You got Austin? Oh man, you got I gotta Scott go Steiner. Scott, I gotta go. I gotta go, Scott. Steiner. I mean, you predicted it. I gotta it. go with my boy. You predicted it in here. Can you go at least one for four in the final four? Stone Cold taps out Scott Steiner in eighteen fourteen. Chad, heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Stone Cold will take on Mystico. Triple H takes on Sean Stasiak. That is your final four for the King. Of the ring, a 92. I'm very worried about Kid Cash right now. Um, but we will figure that three, out. Three three solid wrestling shows. Let's see if we can make it four. Let's see if we can make it four, Chad. King of the ring is shaping up to be huge. But... The beach is shaping up to be huge. But let's see what Chad has left in this tank for Bash. At sorry, the I'm beach. Great American, sorry, sorry. This is Great, great American, American Bash. bash. Oh. A lot of bashing, Chad. A lot of bashing. A lot of bashing. We'll see bashing. you for Thunder. We are at the final road before Great American Bash and King of the Ring. We stop at Thunder. We've had three 90 and above wrestling shows. Let's see if we can make it four for four. Justin, are you excited for Thunder? <laughs> Do you think it's going to go four for four? I, you know what? I'm hopeful. I think there's a shot. There's always a chance, you know? There's always a chance. We'll have to see. Nothing in life is ever a 0.00%. 0. There's always a 0.1% in everything you do, whether that's breathing or, you know, shitting. You're like, you could you could maybe not shit. You could get clogged up, Chad. A there's a chance. Analogy. Let's just run thunder. And just like the getting a 90 you tonight. Me. You had me, and now you're losing me. <laughs> and just like tonight, there's a 0.1% chance... That you know your shit could get clogged up and poop a producer ninety. We start we start thunder <laughs> off with a rare with a rare match instead of a, a promo to start the show. Vader versus Low D, and in a decent match, Low D defeats Vader with an aerial brain buster. Good lord, Low D. Uh, uh, hey, we need to check on Low D and steroids, please. Yeah. Uh, this man is out of his damn mind. And after that, so. Basically, Low D was able to capitalize off of a distraction because Samoa Joe's music hit. And then after the match. Did you book a promo for it? No. No, you didn't. After the match, Samoa Joe runs in the ring, crawls with Vader for a bit, and then hits him in an arm bar and breaks his arm just like he did Sylvester Stallone. Nice. Breaking the everyone's arm. crew, Justin, is down to Ken Shamrock and Bob Sapp. And? And they're, and they're <laughs> tough enough rookies. Who, by the way, Shamrock has shown, you know, 
Uh, well, first we see we see Haas and Benjamin. Charlie Haas is helping Shelton Benjamin train for his upcoming battle at Red American Bash against Batista. Dave Ken Batista. Shamrock, Ken Shamrock, you know, he says he says, "Hey, l- listen, listen, listen. All right, we can train. We can train back at the Tap Out Gym. We gotta go. Samoa Joe, he he just he just had he just broke Vader's arm. We gotta go. All right, we 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 can't be here anymore. We gotta go. And so you know, they look at each other and they, and they and they all leave. They all leave, Justin. They all leave. And we've got Abyss versus Rick Steiner in the rematch. In a decent match. Abyss defeats Rick Steiner with a shock treatment. In the rematch. People were clamoring. They were writing up the blogs. They were writing up the forums. They are like, we need to see this one ran back. Will we see it ran back a third time, Justin? God, I hope so. <laughs> you know, we got Okada and Omega. Rock and Austin. Abyss and Rick Steiner. The trilogies. The monster versus the gremlin. Which one's which? We got Team, we got team <laughs> Canada. And they say, listen, at Great American Bash, we take on Ray and AJ in a two-on-three handicap match. But listen, we're Canadians, right? We're, we're generous. And we feel like being generous tonight in the main event because we're going to let those two guys find a tag team partner, and we're going to face them in a six-man tag tonight. Okay, all right. So basically, we're gonna get the pay per view match tonight. Well, no, because it's a handicap match at the pay per view. So basically, basically, we're gonna, one, we're gonna get a one additional person. That seems like a we dumb got, decision for the heels. There, we got Bam Bam Bigelow, Justin, who is making his second match on Thunder, and he's taking on a. A buffed up Disco Inferno's been buffed up. He's oh, big out. buffed got up bigger. Boy. He wants a, he wants an opportunity to prove himself, and he loses to Bam Bam Bigelow with a power bomb. Nice, good for Bam Bam. Love to see him wrestle. We got here another tag team match. Too cool. Taking on Mike and Mike, and in about the had decent wrestling. A little heat. Too cool defeated Mike and Mike with a when Grandmaster Sexe pinned Mike Quackenbush with a Tennessee jam. Beautiful. Great. That's the wrong song. Tennessee. I don't know how to wrong song. I won't raise a whiskey glasses. And, and, and too cool, you know, they're grabbing microphones. They're not dancing. They say, you know what? We want to put a certain team on notice. We're gonna put a this there are some there are two men in this company and they better watch their backs because too cool we're coming for you and who are you asking that may be well you'll find out in due time Justin, who are too cool calling out who are they calling out i'm trying to look at that i'm trying to remember your roster who the fuck could it be is it these two Samoa Joe is backstage. He's looking for Vader. Or not Vader. He's looking for Ken Shamrock. He bumps into Steven Regal. And he's staring Regal down. And Regal says, Hello, sunshine. Hey, bloody he hell. Says, he, says, he says, first of all, I like what I saw from you out there. Breaking arms. It's very, it's, you know, I like seeing that, that angry side of you. That dangerous side. But, oh, Joe, let's make one thing straight. You know, if, if you beat Ken Shamrock in that steel cage match at the pay-per-view, it's only a matter of time before you get in that ring with me. And I'd love to see you try to break my bloody arm, because I assure you, you won't. Listen, I'll be watching your match. I'll be cheering for you. Samoa Joe, make no mistake. I'm coming for that championship belt. Ooh. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Shannon Moore. You know, he's a, he, he, he's a, he, he gets in the ring. And he, he's getting ready to say something, but he gets cut off by Hoovitude. He, and Hoovitude just says, Shannon Moore, no one cares what you have to say. All right? Listen, no one cares. And listen, I don't have a match at the pay-per-view, which is once again proves this company has, a, has it out for me. This company has a, has a, has a thing against... Overtude. And and so I'm, I'm sick of it. So that's why 
I'm going to challenge you to a tag team match. You and your boy Owen Hart. See how you take on me and my friend Super Crazy. Janet Moore, he says, you know what? Movie, you're on. Oh, yeah. Let's get in to that match. 91. Yes, we got it right here. 91. And about that great wrestling and good heat. This probably should have made a vented. Shannon Moore and Owen Hart yeah, defeat Hoobitude and Super Crazy. When Shannon Moore pins Super Crazy with a morgasm. He said, uh, I see Eric Young. <laughs> and I'm going to put him in the main event. Owen Hart? Nah. Co-main. Co-main. We have here Justin Claudio Castagnoli. He's looking for Regal. He's like, oh, where'd my, where'd my, where'd my tough enough pro go? And he bumps into Raven, and Raven looks at him, and he says, <laughs> Kid, let me teach you an important lesson that your pro's not going to teach you. Which is in this business, timing is important. And sometimes you're in the right place at the right time, and other times you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. And then, Justin, he beats down. He kisses him. And beats up Claudio <laughs> Castagnoli. <laughs> Damn. Claudio, you had so much time to run while he was cutting that fucking long-winded <laughs> promo right there, you dumb dumb. <laughs> you dumb dumb. <laughs> uh, main he event. Was, he, was, he was interested in the lesson Raven was going to teach him. Well, that's why you're a rookie, Claudio. Main event, Team Canada come out. They're in the ring. Styles yeah. comes out. Mysterio come out. Who is going to be their mystery partner, Chad? Returning from injury. Jeff Hardy. Yeah. <laughs> and about to have good wrestling and a decent reaction in the crowd. AJ, Ray, and Jeff Hardy defeat Lance Storm and Team Canada when Jeff Hardy... Submitted <laughs> Bobby Roode with a Texas Clover. Fuck leg. yeah, Jeff Hardy. Fuck yeah. And that's the show. And that's the show. 82. Yay. Yay. Oh, the disparity between Nitro and Thunder is getting worse and worse by the by the week. Listen, we just gotta we just gotta, you know, I just gotta remember. You know, Team Canada's not quite main event ready yet. And uh, and and guys like who we are, so maybe you just remember that. Yeah, I don't think it was Hoovy, I think it was Owen. And well and also who and also Owen. Yeah. yeah and most. also Shannon and also Shannon Moore, I think, quite frankly. And Disco. Maybe not Disco. Alright, we'll see for the pay per views, Chad. Great American Bash, uh King of the Ring. Sell yourself on it. Sell sell King of the Ring or sell Great American Bash, Chad. Why would people I mean, want to watch? We're it? gonna, you're gonna, 